Today I've got for you guys the best Destiny 2 settings in 2022 for improved FPS, better input latency, whilst also maintaining incredible visual fidelity in your game. I want to make it clear that this is not going to just be lowering every single setting in the game down to the lowest. You don't need to go all in on FPS. It's nicer to keep some of that visual fidelity for that nice gameplay experience. I'm also, where applicable, going to be offering a couple of different options for some of the settings where potentially based on your build, you might be able to set it differently depending on what you actually want to get out of your settings. Before we jump into it, today's video is sponsored by Blazing Boost, a website that focuses on providing services for busy gamers, running through raids for you, gathering loot for you, all that awesome stuff. They also have a load of customizable Play With Pro services, so you can skip the toxic LFGs, play with a Sherpa through PvP and raids, and learn from the best of the best. They have over 23,000 five-star reviews on their Trustpilot, so no need to worry about that. You can use my discount code 4Eyes5 at checkout for a 5% discount on any service. Go check it out, links in the description. So we're currently here on EDZ, just overlooking a battle that's going on below. We're not going to get involved in that, we're just going to be focusing on our settings. But being in an area like this, when you're trying out settings, means you can have a look around and actually get a good idea of uh, FPS fluctuations and overall how the game looks. So let's jump into these settings. Oh, I'm actually getting shot. Let's just move out of the way of that. These ships flying in. Maybe let's just move over a little bit. Okay, hopefully this ends up a bit better. We're in a bit more of a remote area, a little bit further away from that fighting happening over there. So let's jump into the settings. Hopefully you don't get killed this time. Go to your video and we will begin. So starting off with window mode, you've got the options of windowed, full screen, borderless windowed and windowed full screen. I've got two recommendations here for you. I think if you're going for the maximum optimization in terms of really good low latency gameplay, it's not really much about FPS, but definitely the latency side of things, then go full screen. It's going to mean that the game has um, complete access to all resources on your PC while you're actually running the game. Uh, it's running exclusively in full screen. So anything happening basically in the background on your PC is kind of, it's like frozen in place and the game is getting all of the resources thrown to it. Borderless windowed is going to be a better option for you if you are someone who likes to alt tab a lot. You know, you're doing something, you're doing another thing. Maybe you're following a guide or something. This is going to allow you to have a quicker alt tab in and out of the game, but it can have adverse impacts on your input latency. I say can. Not everyone has the problems. So try both of these out. See which one works for you. I think if you're just going for proper optimization, full screen is going to be your best bet. That's what I go for. Next up is resolution. You want to put this to whatever the native resolution of your monitor is. What I mean by native is what is the actual uh, kind of base resolution of the monitor. For me, I have a 1080p monitor. A lot of people will have 2K monitors. My secondary monitor is a 2K monitor, so 2560 by 1440. But the first thing you should be doing is going for native because that's going to make the game actually look the best. If you start trying to upscale this for whatever reason, if you want to try and push the game you know, past its limits, it actually makes the game look a bit worse. And there's a better way to improve the visual fidelity if you want to further down in the menu. So for now, keep this at whatever the native resolution of your monitor is. For me, that's 1920 by 1080. Next up is V-Sync. Keep this off. If you're running a G-Sync setup, where uh, your monitor is using a FreeSync or a G-Sync technology to maintain um, a refresh rate that matches the game, then you can start doing things with V-Sync. But I don't touch any of that, and I'd recommend most people don't unless you know what you're doing. Instead, make sure V-Sync is off. You're going to get way better input latency uh, in the game. It's going to potentially lead to some screen tearing, but with most setups, this game doesn't have much problem with screen tearing, so I'd keep this off. Frame cap, I would honestly recommend that you enable this in this game. Um, simple reason is going over your refresh rate, uh, it can cause a few issues. And the bigger thing is there's no real need to. Now, I have a 240 hertz monitor. So I put my frame rate cap at 240. Spoiler alert, I do not hit 240 FPS in this game. So this doesn't really do anything for me. But for a lot of you guys, who I know will be running 144 hertz monitors or even 60 hertz monitors, this frame rate cap will help you out a lot. It will stabilize your FPS. You do not need to be going over 144 in this game and having a smooth, consistent frame rate will make the game feel so much better. 
Once again, if you are really, really focused on the competitive side of things, Crucible or Gambit, you may get advantages in terms of latency from having this uncapped. But if you're playing the game from a PvE standpoint, mostly with a bit of PvP, keep the frame rate cap on, set your frame rate cap to the uh, refresh rate of your monitor, and then just leave it at that because you'll get a nice smooth frame rate, assuming you're hitting that frame rate all the time, which hopefully with the rest of these settings, you will be. Field of view. This is an interesting one. I've always said in a lot of games, the field of view should just go to max. And if you have a solid PC build, do this, shove this to 105. Having a wider FOV makes the game so much more enjoyable to play. You get a lot more on your screen at once, which gives you both a competitive advantage as well as just making the game far better feeling to play because you don't feel like you're running in the mud. When you have a really low FOV, it makes you feel like you're running really slow. Gives you that kind of console experience as we call it. You know, us PC gamers, we like our FOV. So I'd recommend putting it on max. However, if you have a slower PC build, field of view is actually known in this game to affect FPS because you're having more stuff on the screen at once. If I'm at 105 FOV in comparison to 95 FOV, there's more on the screen when I'm at 105. So that lowers the FPS, an actual significant amount, up to 10 FPS sometimes. 10 FPS for a low spec PC is a lot. So for low spec PCs or people playing on laptops and stuff, start bringing this field of view down to a level where you can you can bear with it. Some people really don't mind and they'll put this really, really low. Fair enough, go for it, you will gain FPS. But for us who have strong PC builds, it's not really gonna make much difference. I'd recommend you just put it on the max. Screen bounds and adjust brightness is personal preference. Screen bounds is just to set your screen bounds up, so I don't really need to do anything with that. And then brightness, I actually go one above the recommended, and I do this in pretty much every single game. I find that every single game for me on my monitor, uh, the default or recommended brightness is always a bit too low. Ignore this symbol on the left, adjust the brightness to make the symbol visible. Technically, I can still see the symbol when I've got it on one, but that makes the game way too dark. I would always recommend having the brightness a little bit over. You might have to adjust to it, but it will give you overall better visibility in the game. Next up, graphics quality. This is kind of the, the meat and potatoes of the settings menu. Graphics quality is just going to be custom because we're going to be changing everything below it. And let's start with anti-aliasing. So we've got three different options here. Off, FXAA, and SMAA. These are what make the game look less jaggedy. So all the jagged edges, if we turn anti-aliasing off and we come back, you will see as we look round, it actually looks pretty good. Now, this surprised me because I assumed that having anti-aliasing off would make the game look really, really jagged, but it really actually makes the game look really sharp. Now, if you go to FXAA, we come back in here, go to FXAA. FXAA is a form of anti-aliasing to get rid of the jagged edges, but really all it does is it blurs the game. And I think it makes the game look a hell of a lot worse. A lot of people recommend FXAA because it's easier to run than SMAA. SMAA is very good anti-aliasing, but um, it is more system uh, heavy to run. But FXAA just adds this sort of like Vaseline spread all over the game and it's quite subtle, but I do not like it. I would recommend for most people, unless you really can't stand jagged edges, I mean, usually I can't, but I really can't see them in this game. I'd recommend you just keep anti-aliasing off. The game looks really good without it. There's only limited amounts of jaggedy bits um, somewhat on the gun that I'm holding, but SMAA doesn't really change the game look that much and it limits your FPS by up to 10 FPS. Once again, anti-aliasing is quite a heavy thing to be running, so keep it off is what I'd recommend. Next up, uh, screen space ambient occlusion. So ambient occlusion is a form of how shadows are rendered in, uh, in the game. And by having this off, the game looks very, very flat. Uh, a lot of the small like nooks and crevices around the map where there would be natural shadows being cast, the shadows are just gone and the game looks just this really flat, it's, it's very subtle. Like if I sit here and look at the game now, I'm not like, oh my God, the ambient occlusion is missing. I need to put ambient occlusion on, but I can tell the game looks that little bit worse. The performance impact of going from off to HDAO is very minimal but it improves a lot of the shadows on these kind of surfaces. You see around all these rocks, it improves all that dramatically. 
Going up to 3D, the next setting does make that look considerably better, but it is system heavy. So I would recommend that most people stick at HDAO. Texture and isotropy. This is probably the simplest one on the list. Put this on max, 16X. This should be pretty much set for every single game that you play. Why? Texture and isotropy is, well, it has little to no effect on FPS or latency, but it definitely has a big effect on visual fidelity. This improves the look of textures when you look at them from an angle that isn't direct on. So if you look at a wall that's directly in front of you, then texture and isotropy is not that important. But if you're looking at the floor ahead of you where you're looking at it from like this angle and the floor is obviously flat, you're not looking at it straight down, texture and isotropy is what actually improves the look of those textures. And it's not system heavy, so shove this on 16 times, easy peasy. Texture quality. I run this at highest. Texture quality in basically every single game is all down to your VRAM usage. If you look at the top, my VRAM usage, I have up to eight gigs because I've got a 3070. I'm lucky enough to have one, thank God. But I'm only using 2.5K megabytes of the 8,000. If I bring this down, you will see just lowering it from highest to high brought down the VRAM usage by 500 megabytes. If I go all the way down to lowest, I come all the way down to 1000. So this is going to be sort of a personal preference thing, but for most people who have semi-decent builds and a decent amount of VRAM, I'm talking 2K or more, you can probably run this at highest. If you are pushing the VRAM usage to the limit, then start bringing this down until your VRAM usage is fine. For a lot of people, high is going to be fine, but if you've got the build to run it, run highest. It does not affect FPS at all, and it makes the game look so much better. Shadow quality. I put this on low. Uh, shadow quality is, for Destiny and for many other games, a really, really intensive uh, setting. But I've actually found that the difference between running low and highest is weirdly minimal. If I put this on highest and we start looking around at some shadows, like, I mean, these are some good ones to look at. Hey, we've got a person. Hello. Someone just jumped in. We look at all these shadows. They're crisp. They look realistic. Sounds good. If I then come into here, we bring this down to low. What it actually does, and it's weird, it just makes the shadows less dark, which if anything improves the visibility in the game. It's very, very weird. Um, the shadows are a bit less dark. They're a bit less defined, I guess but they don't look worse. Maybe they look slightly less realistic, but you're gaining a solid amount of FPS from running these. Some of the shadows at, uh, you know, the side angles look a decent amount worse, but I think it's definitely worth it for the trade-off. Now, going down to lowest does make the shadows look pretty poop. So we don't go down to that. We just leave it at low. And that's what I'd recommend for everyone, unless you are someone who really, really likes the look of shadows, in which case, you know, go with what you want. But that's what I'd recommend. Depth of field. Really obvious one, keep this off. Depth of field is basically where things that are further away look blurry. It's meant to look realistic, but I'd recommend you keep it off in every single game. It makes the game look horrible. Um, it's a post-processing effect, so it does affect FPS as well, so keep it off. The next four things, environmental detail distance, character detail distance, foliage detail distance, and foliage shadows distance. Put these all on medium. These are, for some of these, the lowest. For some of them, they're like the medium setting. The medium is the medium. Um, but for Foliage Shadows, as I just showed, it's actually, the for some reason, they decided to do medium high and highest rather than low, medium, high. Who knows? But putting these all on medium just gives you a good balance, really. These are all just about finding a balance, how things look at distance. If you put these on the lowest, you know, these first three, it makes things at distance look pretty crap. Um, but you don't need to put them on high because that's just taking up resources for things that you're not looking at. The, the things that are at distance are the kind of things in your periphery. They're the things you're not focusing on, um, but you don't want them to look absolutely horrific because then you start to notice them. You just want them to be there and look decent enough, and that's why I recommend you put these in medium. And then foliage shadows distance. I put this on the lowest, which is medium, because it still looks fine, and shadows at distance don't really matter anyway. Light shafts. I put this on high. Um, the light shafts in this game actually look really, really nice and they have minimal effect on FPS. So I keep this on high. I'd recommend you do so. Motion blur and wind impulse. I'd recommend you keep these off. Once again, 
They are post-processing effects that don't really add anything to the visual fidelity. Wind impulse on certain areas can make things look kind of cooler, I guess. So you might want to try playing with this one on or off and see if you actually like having it on and like having that wind effect in certain areas. But I've had, I, I just recommend you keep it off and then you don't really know what you're missing. Bit of an interesting way of thinking about it, but it's it, it, it can have improvements overall to how the game's running. Anyway, lastly, we're coming into the additional video area. Render resolution. This is what I was talking about at the top when I said don't change your resolution. If you want to gain improvements in FPS or improvements in visual fidelity, you can do it down below. And that is this render resolution. So currently we're at 100 or 100 percent, which basically means we've selected 1920 by 1080, 1080p, and we're rendering it at 100 percent of that, which is what I recommend most people do. Just leave it at 100. Now, if after going through all these settings, you are really struggling for FPS, start bringing this down. You can bring this down to 90%. And if I apply this and go back, it blurs up the game a little bit, of course. That's, you know, what it's doing. It's making the game more blurry. There's an event happening, which is kind of scary. Oh, God. This isn't very helpful, is it? Why, 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 why have you done this? Oh, there we go. That was weird, but now you can see the game is a bit more blurry overall, but it's playable. And if you are really, really struggling for FPS and you need an extra 5 to 10, bringing that setting down is a simple one-stop shot way of fixing it. So I would recommend bringing it down if you need to, but for most people, keep it at 100. You can also bring this up and make the game look really, really sharp. And honestly, if you don't care about FPS and you care more about visual fidelity, bring this up to 110 or 115. See what the balance is in terms of FPS and visual fidelity and find what works for you. But for most people, 100 is what I recommend. Last three settings, we'll bash them very quickly before we end this video. HDR, recommend you keep it off. Um, if you've got a HDR display and you want to use HDR, you can go figure that out for yourself. I don't have one, so I don't use it. And if you don't have one, keep this off. Chromatic aberration and film grain both are post-processing effects that shouldn't be in video games. They do not make the game look better. They make the game look more realistic from like a film standpoint, which is stupid. We're not, play we're not watching a film, we're playing a game. So keep these off. And there we go, guys. The full settings for Destiny in 2022. Wanted to go through all of these and give the in-depth breakdown. If you have enjoyed this video, then please do like the video down below and subscribe for more awesome videos coming very, very soon. It's been Forrester Dave. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.